The return up for Parlo. Leaves it off. Here's Mia Hamm. In the box. The shot. Go. She's got the record. Hey everyone, my name is Sabria Whitaker and I'm the founder of Grow the Game. Erica Piancastelli here, Tokyo 2021 Olympian. This is Carly Jackson, professional goaltender for the Buffalo Buttes. Hey everyone, this is Connor Moore, the social media manager of the Chicago Sky. For the first time in You are now listening to Women's Sports Matter. Women's Sports Matter. Hosted by Gianna Belcastro. Arete Okunbawale wins the national championship for Notre Dame. everyone and welcome to women's sports matter a podcast that is your one-stop shop for all things women's sports today we're doing another interview because of course we are that's basically what this podcast is now is interview after interview after interview and i know that's what you love about the show and that's why you keep listening because you don't want to hear me talk for 45 minutes i don't want to have to hear myself talk for 45 minutes either that's editing is such a hassle oh my god but Today, we've got an interview that I am super duper excited for. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Tatum Malazzo. I'm a defender for the Chicago Red Stars, um, and I'm so excited to be on the podcast today. Ooh, excitement <laughs> for podcasting. It's my new favorite. It's my new favorite thing. We'll just get right into it. Um, I think the... The way that the Red Stars have been performing for the beginning of the season has been a shock to a lot of people, including myself. I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about what this first part of the season has been like for your team and how you've gotten to, I believe it's third place in the table right now? Yeah, you're right. So I guess, I mean... I feel like we were feeling the same thing as everyone last year when we made a bunch of trades and we were like, what is this going to look like? And so we kind of all went in. Um, also, the new coach situation with an open mind, kind of just like, all right, let's just take what we can get right now. And I think it really helped us. I think um, a lot of girls found more confidence in spaces um, and could step into bigger roles as rookies. And so I think that really helped us definitely throughout the last couple of weeks, as you could see, we've needed a lot of other people to step in. Um, so I think it definitely was a whirlwind of emotions <laughs> at first, kind of like, where are we going to go from here? But I think it actually long-term um, is helping us kind of get all of our ducks in a row and with like a younger squad too. So I think that's exciting. Since you bring up the younger squad, there's a lot of rookies that have been a part of the starting 11 and, you know, being some, I guess I'll use the word game changers as mm -hmm. people hate that word. That's why I use the quotes, <laughs> uh, being game changers, uh, as you know, coming into the game and really like doing phenomenally. What do you think about what the rookies have done so far this season? I mean, even for myself last year as a rookie and getting playing time, I think it's so exciting for them. And I think being in that position last year, I mean, it wasn't obviously that long ago. So I think it can relate a lot to them. And it's been really helpful for them to find confidence because we need that from them. And I think they're giving us exactly what we've needed. So it's exciting because they are so young. So there's a lot, a lot to grow on and improve on in the next couple of years. So I think it'll, it's really good for us. Since you bring up your rookie season being last year, which it, it feels like forever ago, honestly. It really doesn't even feel like that. Like, it feels like so long. Yeah. Can you talk about your journey to the Red Star squad? Yeah. I mean, where should we start? Like, I guess we'll start end of college since that kind of where it picks up. Um, so unfortunately, my senior year, my last game, I tore my ACL. And so then I was like, what am I going to do now? I had plans to go into the draft, um, had always loved, been around the Red Stars. So that was kind of my plan. And then that happened. So I had to take the next year that would have been my first rookie year and kind of do all my rehab, 
get all my stuff together, get ready. And then I was just kind of hoping that I could get invited to um, their next preseason for tryouts. So that was like my goal that last whole year. And then tryouts was actually the first tryout was the first time like actually playing again with the team in like over a year. So that was really exciting and also terrifying, (laughs) like just going and not knowing, like, can you even still play soccer, (laughs) which is funny now, but like, it really was going through my head. (laughs) Um, And then after that, like, really, I was just happy to be there. I was like, I'm so ecstatic that I made it to the tryout. The tryouts last year were like two months long. So it was kind of a, a grind for two months. And then when I actually signed, I was like, this is crazy. I'm just so happy to even have the experience and the opportunity to try out that now I'm actually, I'm on the team. Like what's going on? That's crazy. And then it just feels like everything really worked out. I mean, unfortunately some girls just like got hurt, and then the older girls on our teams and in positions that like getting her or moving around, um, it just opened up. And I think It just kind of happened really fast where I didn't even have time to think like what's going on. I'm just like, okay, you're, you're starting in the game now. So good luck. And then it just kind of went from there. I, when I was watching along last season, I was like, whoa, they're starting a rookie. Like, yeah. And it was, and I just, without going into a lot, it's like with the coach at the time that didn't seem they'd like to start a lot of younger players. And so that's why I'm excited about this season so many younger talent is playing and you Mm -hmm. get to be able to see that and well I mean Ava Cook got called up to Mm -hmm. the 23s yeah I mean I think it's so it's it's a good change because I feel like the last couple years you see mainly veterans coming in and they kind of keep the tempo so I think it's really exciting that they have the opportunity this year because like they really do help I mean I don't see like the more we get the rookies playing, I feel like the better the league will grow, the more people will want to join, the better the soccer will be. So I think it just, it's heading in the right steps at least. <laughs> and we're always thinking like, oh, I wonder what the, the starting lineup's going to be this time. It's always <laughs> right. changing. I know. <laughs> You've got to keep you on your toes, I guess. <laughs> yes. You, honestly, I'm like, do I even try and guess today's lineup? Right. I, I might as well just let I'll just see what the admin on social posts because I don't even want to I don't even want to try because I know know. it's going to be vaguely (laughs) different um from what I from what I thought it would be Mm -hmm. but thank you for you know talking a little bit about what that process was like Mm -hmm. I also want to know you went to a relative I want to say relatively small high school because I I'm only saying that because I went to a big high school and I looked at the attendance for yours and I'm like "Mm, that seems like a little small so how does someone from a small high school get to play SEC soccer well so it's actually funny I I transferred high schools in the from my sophomore to junior and before that I went to an even smaller high school it was about 400 people oh my god and and to me I was like this is way too small like I feel like I need a bigger pond right now so I was like okay that was a private school so I went to the public school and it was bigger but I knew I had wanted to go to a big school and then when I committed to South Carolina I was like this is gonna be like a lot of people (laughs) like a lot of people but yeah so I guess that's kind of funny because it went from a very small high school to like an okay high school and then to 45,000 people. <laughs> Just a, a, such a huge difference. Oh my I gosh. I know. It was crazy. It was definitely, I mean, overwhelming at first being in such a big place, but it definitely, um, it was a good move. <laughs> I also went from a, a private school, small private school to, well, my high school is very big I don't even remember how many people were in my graduating class because we didn't even have freaking graduation but and then now I'm going to Nebraska so it's like small yeah medium large like humongous school oh my gosh I know it's crazy big number difference I (laughs) my my family was telling me you know like you go you 
you don't want to go to such a huge school. You want to go somewhere where it's like a, basically a, like a community. And I think mm-hmm. that's why I was thrown into like the the Catholic private schools that have such tiny like numbers <laughs> of, of attendance. My grade school class, 22 kids graduated, including myself. Yes, I'm not kidding. Mine was the same. I think it was like 20 to 25. And I think yeah. we were with the same kids from kindergarten through eighth grade. And I'm like, I think, and then it was like, a feeder school so it was like the private middle school went to the private high school so I was like yeah I've actually been with the same 50 people since I was six I need to get out of here I know a lot of people that are like that um that happened with my private school my private high school so I was like oh my god everyone knows each other and there's only like 175 <laughs> of us too <laughs> Yeah, that's the part that everyone knows each other part. I'm like, I just like don't know if we all need to be in each other's business like this. (laughs) Exactly. Oh my gosh. The fact that I have someone to talk about this right now. Just worry about yourself. Yeah. Respectfully. (laughs) Maybe disrespectfully sometimes. It depends, but respectfully. It depends. (laughs) <laughs> this is awesome okay yeah, this is literally. this is the information that everybody needs to know if, especially yeah. if you go to a catholic grade school i feel school. like we're, we're not alone there are going to be a lot of people out there that be like yeah i felt that yes i'm still i'm still <laughs> going through my my catholic school trauma so <laughs> <laughs> you'll get the, there. the uniforms that's my biggest thing see that's the thing at least we didn't even have uniforms which oh. at that but we would get dress coded all the time and I'm like at this point I would just rather have a uniform <laughs> if yes. I can't wear my leggings I got what am I I don't know why the I leggings was an issue though that's like it the was, one oh, thing I is, never understood no it's a, there's a lot of things but we'll <laughs> we'll 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 move past this topic <laughs> that's another day <laughs> that's a, that's like a whole nother podcast episode yeah. we're gonna need like a couple days to get through all that. <laughs> it's it's a new podcast honestly <laughs> yeah oh uh, this is great oh my gosh this is a new bonding moment this is it this really is, is. Just, this is just what I needed today oh my god I didn't know I needed it but we're here <laughs> <laughs> all right so can we talk a little bit about like growing up and you know finding your passion for soccer like how did you get into the game was it your first choice of sport did you play other ones growing up like how did you decide you know like soccer is my sport and it will be for a while yeah so growing up I think when I was real little probably like it had to be five or six or seven I'm not quite sure but that's when I think I started playing rec soccer like just for the neighborhood stuff and at the same time I think I was doing like gymnastics too like I think and softball my parents were throwing me into all the, the town things just to get a feel for everything and then soccer just stuck Um, I did play basketball till freshman year of high school, loved, loved playing basketball, but just, I wasn't that good. (laughs) So I was like, probably we're going to stick to something. Well, it's fun to play, but this isn't long-term for you. So let's find something else. And then, um, played rec soccer for my Orland park, um, town for a couple years and then went to eclipse and played at eclipse till I graduated. And I think, Basketball was always fun. I guess it was like a a toss up between those two. But soccer, I think I found like still my best friends to this day were all my friends that I grew up playing with. So I think that's where it was like the relationships I had with soccer Um, and obviously the love for it. I mean, I just was like, I think this is what I'm going to stick with. So it's kind of how it got going. Did you know in high school that you wanted, like when you first started high school, did you know that you wanted to like one day go into the NWSL or was that something that was in the back of your mind? Um, so it's kind of funny. The Red Stars used to train a little in Oak Brook where um, my Eclipse fields were. So randomly we'd see them like pass by them. Um, but at the time they were playing at the benedictine university so it was like i think we went to one or two games and like it was cool um definitely like a fun experience for like just your friends to go to like a cool soccer game it was really low key and so i think in the beginning i didn't really think about it as much i was just like i definitely want to play in college and i think my mindset was just like see where if the league grows like that would be so awesome like i'd love to play the stars like hometown like how great um 
So I think in the beginning, it was just like a waiting game. I was like, I'll definitely play in college. Like, that's what I want to do. And then just to see where it went from there. So not always the goal, but I think it was always a little bit in the back of my head. Like I would want to do this for as long as I can. So did you think that overseas was also an option too? Or is that something you're like, no. Yeah. So um, when I got hurt, um, the in senior tore my ACL, I wasn't sure if I would have a chance in the NBSL. So I was kind of training. And if I didn't have that chance, I think I would have wanted to go overseas and kind of get back to playing until I could find somewhere else to play. Um, and then it just worked out that I was able to try out. So it definitely was an option just because I was like, I'll go wherever to play at this point. Wherever there's an option, you know, yeah, just, you got to go. I'll be there. You're like, Sweden? Sure. Wh- sure. Yeah, why I, not? Like, I, I could dabble there. I mean, I'm, I'm open to the experiences. <laughs> Anywhere. Even like, I know some of the, some of your teammates have did like a loan in Australia. That's mm-hmm. quite a popular thing. Would you ever consider doing that in your off season? Yeah, I definitely think that's one of my next goals for off season coming up. Um, just trying to figure out the timing with when the season ends, when the next one will start. So that's always kind of like in the back of my head, but definitely a goal for one of the next off seasons for sure. Well, let's talk about what the team atmosphere is like for this year's Red Stars. There's a lot of younger players that have, have been on the field for the team. What is just overall team atmosphere like? I mean, it, it's funny because even I call them younger players, but like the way the draft was in the college and COVID year, we're like actually all the same age. <laughs> so it's like kind of funny. I'm like, when we play like 5 2 we're like younger ones in the middle. And then I look around and I'm like, that actually might be me. <laughs> so I'm not sure. So, I mean, I think it's definitely changed from last year a lot. And I think in a better way. Um, there, there are a lot of rookies. Um, so I think having a bigger group of younger people and then like a medium group in the middle, say like the girls, my age that have been here a year to three years, and then the veterans, I think it's a really good mix. Um, and I think everyone's really meshed together well, which obviously is helpful. (laughs) Um, and I think just based on the last couple of years, I think everyone was ready this year to just kind of have a clean slate, fresh start and be more teammates like we all have the same goal type of thing that makes sense (laughs) do you have any personal goals for the season Mm. I think I would mm. (laughs) I mean I want to be back to a final team goal team oriented goal but personally um I think for me I want to be more consistent as a player more consistent with winning tackles aerial balls that type of thing um, some more just like specific things. Um, I would like to score a goal this year, <laughs> but like who doesn't? But I mean, I was like, okay, you scored in your rookie year. So like now you kind of like, you got to set the bar, like you got to get up there. So I think that's definitely up there. Um, it would be really great. I think eventually to be in like a month's best 11. I feel like that's always a goal to kind of reach for. Um, long-term I think just finding my feet being consistent and hoping maybe there's a national team chance um but I guess there's always just got to put in the work and hope the opportunity is there <laughs> absolutely so since you brought up your goal <laughs> I have to ask <laughs> what was going through your mind during the like the whole setup to the goal and then afterwards because that was is- that that's a very special goal <laughs> I just want to know more about it. Such a funny story. Okay. Because I remember warming up by the sideline. I was with Katie Johnson and Danny Colaprico. And he, and Rory was like, you're going to sub in. And I was like, I'm just like really nervous. I still get super nervous going into games at that point. Like it was still new. So I was talking to Kjo and Danny and I was like, guys, I'm really nervous. We're making jokes. I'm like, I got to call my mom and tell her to pick me up. Like they're subbing me in. I'm so nervous. And they're all joking. They're like, you look so good. You're going to go out there and kill it. Like you look gorgeous today. I'm like, okay, like that is so sweet. Like, all right, let's just forget about it. We just go out there. And then I just, the ball just like popped up and I was up there and I was like, I might as well just shoot it, I guess. And then just went for it. And then I saw it went in and I was like, 
what in the world? And then it was so funny just looking at the sideline. I think I pointed at Kaylee and I was like, that's for you. It was just like a really funny event, honestly. That was, <laughs> I, I was watching the game what, live and I was like, oh my God, what just happened? It was, it was unreal. I was like, how did that even happen? Yes, when defenders score goals, it's always, it's always amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, we'll take some points for the defenders today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes, that was actually yeah. so funny. Sometimes I'll go back and, and I'll watch it and then I'll look at everybody's reactions and I'm like, this is, this is great. This is exactly, this is, this is perfect. There's like no I, words. Literally, I think the next day or something, Kaylee texted me a picture of it and she was like, this is the best celebration I think I've seen. I can't believe you pointed at us. So I'm like, honestly, it happened so fast. <laughs> like, I don't even remember. Can I ask you, um, at the time that the OL Reign was playing on a baseball field, and I, I know that fields are such a huge issue. issue. We have, you know, Sagra Field and then mm-hmm. um, Kansas City was playing... I believe on the Kansas city Monarchs baseball field and then whatever OL was doing, what, what can the NWSL do to ensure player safety with these God awful fields? Yeah. I mean, Sagra is a nightmare. I think everyone in the whole league can agree that that place is it's got to go. Um, so I think it's always kind of nerve wracking to go into those places and you're like, it's obviously not great conditions, but they're like, I don't know what the solution is. I think there may be a lot of solutions like money, people willing to let women's sports into their space type of thing. So that that would be where I would think to start. <laughs> but it's just like at this point when you're nervous as a professional to go out onto pitches with like just bad condition conditions, it's like, I guess we'll just do what you got to do. <laughs> so what's it like playing on a, baseball field I've never got to experience that that type of thing I do work at a at a baseball park and I know that the grass isn't amazing so Mm -hmm. what what is that experience like for people that don't know I mean for one it's a lot smaller which some could say is nice less running it's all how you look at it (laughs) some would say it's hard to play because it's just not what you're used to um it's also weird because the, you know how the pitchers mount. So there's always like a little lump. So, I mean, it's just like, not, it's not flat. I do remember to be fair. I think the grass was pretty decent. So I'll give them that. Like they had good grass at least at, um, in Seattle, but it's definitely just like, how do we even do this? Like, I think there was like sprinklers in the field. It's like, <laughs> yes, like the, what's the going on. Yep. I know all I know all about that or I try to learn from my coworkers like all about the park and it's like I look at the one that I work at I'm like people play soccer on a baseball field that's I still don't understand how it fits but apparently it does (laughs) I I would make comments about the NWSL but I'm gonna refrain from right now yeah I'm not trying to get in trouble no one's no one's getting (laughs) fined today today. (laughs) listen nobody Nobody in the the league office listens to my show, so I think I think you'll be good. We'll be safe for now, but <laughs> who knows? We'll be we'll be we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a really really exciting game coming up for the Fire and Red Stars. I yes. believe on July thirtieth. Yes. What are you What are you doing on July thirtieth? Yeah, so July 30th, it's a double header, which is super exciting. Um, so the fire usually is at Soldier Field to begin with. And for, I guess, those of you who don't know what Soldier Field is, it's where the Bears play. It's a massive, gorgeous stadium um, on the lake in the city. It is super cool. It's like in the middle of the city, so it's super busy all around. Um, and I think that's what we're most excited about to be where, because Bridgeview is like, we live in the city, like all the players live in the city and then it's like Bridgeview. So it's like, (laughs) you're not, it's not Chicago. (laughs) So like, I'm excited. I think we're all excited to actually play a game in the city and hopefully, I mean, I feel like with more accessibility within the city, like you're closer, hopefully we'll get more people and then the double header with the fire. I mean, 
I, personally, I think it's like long overdue, but it will be, that'll be the first one. So we'll get it going. Yeah. But we're, we're really excited. I'm pumped. I, I took off from work. Well, I will take off from work that day. <laughs> Cause I, I also, I work at the fire. I do 50, 50 stuff. So I'm going to, oh, cool. I'm going to do 50, 50 and then I'm going to go sit down. Yeah, <laughs> we're like I did my job for the first eighty minutes yeah. of the game. I'm gonna I'm gonna go chill now and, I and feel watch like the Red fair. Stars. Yeah, I was like I'm not working a baseball game that day. I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, I think it, it it'll be good too. I think and against San Diego, I mean it'll be a good um, rematch because that was early on. So I think we've yes. grown since then. So that'll be really exciting. And the Red Stars have the night game, which is yes pretty cool i know so we're hoping i mean tell everyone to stick around yes There's another game after you're, you're gonna want to see it <laughs> i when i sell the the tickets and i go through i'm like oh you know like on july 30th there's gonna be two soccer games and they're like huh I'm like yeah there's gonna be the fire and the red stars and the red stars <laughs> yeah like the the nwsl team the nwsl team and it's like this whole like, <laughs> like uh, let me see, let me see where I lost you. Let's back it up. The Red Stars. <laughs> I feel like people are not in the know in the city. That that's what it seems like. Yeah, I know. Which, for we're gonna get on that. We need billboards. We need you know just overall like advertisements for yeah. everywhere. I want our faces on the sides of the buses and stuff. Like, let's yes. go. <laughs> That's what we need. We're going to come up with an ad campaign. And we're going to yeah. be like, city of Chicago, you did something for when the sky won the championship. Mm-hmm. Do something for the Red Stars, too. Yeah. They have sure. their license plates coming out. I know. That is exciting. That was exciting news. I, w- I, w- I would get one, but I'm, I'm moving to another state. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. So, <laughs> and now my sister has my car and she does definitely does not want like, she's a hater so she doesn't want oh. any she doesn't like women's sports because I think it's I, I like them okay it's a little competition thing oh absolutely 100 <laughs> percent she is <sighs> that's so is funny the- I, relatable I could go on and on about how my sister does all these things the other day I was recording an episode and I was filming in in my office and the office is next to the garage and so she opens the door she's coming home from work I she like swears she goes like son of a and she hits her (laughs) knee on the door or something and I'm like Isabella Santa you just I'm recording an episode why yeah why do you have to do this to me <sighs> yeah it's, that's what they're there for i guess i, I guess i, I mean, don't know what else <laughs> I, I blame my mom that's I'm like this you created this monster yeah. right there that's right. all on you so uh, <sighs> oh well that's that's all i have to say <laughs> that is oh well yeah we'll end it there we don't want to get too heated today I can make it I could also make another (laughs) well here's a fun fact my sister has been on my podcast twice okay my family loves that me no I I don't even though I was like hey do you want to do you want to I don't I need an episode do you want to be on my show my family loves that stuff she thinks it's hilarious (laughs) I think that is like really sweet, but I, I do understand where you're coming from. Yes, <laughs> like, it's the, it's the younger your- sister's thing for mm-hmm. sure. See, I'm the older sister, so I get it. <laughs> I'm also the oldest and oof. <laughs> yep. Responsibility for, it for that ends. one. It never ends. Did you have to teach your sibling how to drive? Um, so I have three. Okay. Younger. Two of them. I've got I've been in the car with one of them as they were learning um the the youngest one is still too little so probably just I try to stay away from that honestly I don't want to I that's the responsibility I don't want I was like I don't want to be in this vehicle with you that's (laughs) my thoughts exactly (laughs) like you can ask one of your parents I'm not doing it I went driving with my sister once and I was like I can't do it no it's terrifying it's just 
it, I, I feel like old because my sister just turned 16 and we're like four years apart and I'm like oh so she can drive now yeah <laughs> she's driving my car right I don't I don't want any part of it no make it make sense but I don't want to be involved <laughs> <laughs> oh wow all right so it is the summertime right well officially six days ago it is the summertime what are some of your favorite chicago summer activities so big fan of picnics at the lake i mean um we've done a couple sunrise ones but it's always nice in the afternoon it's just like so busy now um big coffee girl so i love to like there's a really nice shop that i can walk to um that's been so nice and now actually as of yesterday i got two kittens so now we're we're all occupied (laughs) with the kittens even more busier than before (laughs) we're like i don't know what we'll be doing this summer but i think the kittens will be involved (laughs) what are the kittens names so we have angel and charles is there (laughs) any specific reason for the name did you name them or were they already named Angel, she had her name. She was already named. And we were like, okay, that's cute. And then her brother, his name was Abe. But then we were like, it could kind of be cute, like Charlie and his angel. So now it was Charlie. But when he's being like, it's Charles. We're like, Charles, (laughs) enough. (laughs) (laughs) Enough. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, that's where we're at. (laughs) What is your song of the summer? song of the summer i am a big dua lipa stan um also big doja cat stan so are honestly i'd be like anywhere between those two no specific songs just artists let me let me look at my what's my my most what did i play next Mm, i would say i really like the song vegas by doja cat right now for the the Elvis movie I have not um, heard that song yet but I will listen I when think we're done. I've heard it on TikTok actually you can cut that out don't let the people know I'm big on TikTok <laughs> <laughs> um what else oh I think Someday by Kygo's also up there I'd say probably those two are my top two right now okay yeah <laughs> but That's honestly my, yeah I'm, I'm not a big like like I don't really have a favorite like anything I'm very like we'll I'll see. pick a few and right like what is what how are we feeling today type of thing <laughs> um this emotion this emotion and this emotion yeah, um, so maybe we'll, five we'll, emotions we'll exactly yeah. so can't just pick one I don't <laughs> think I could pick one either there's too many good ones but also it's like my music taste is like this big it's not I don't it's not a big range of things yeah it's like I don't even bother um trying to like go into other genres is there one genre that you just despise and will not listen to Mm. at all despise Mm. so I guess growing up I didn't listen to country a lot then I went to South Carolina and I guess I I enjoyed it more so I feel like there's a lot of people that are like love hate on the country music but I'm on team. I like country music. Honestly, I don't hate anything. I don't think. I'm a hater of country music. <laughs> yeah. See, I yeah. was like, it's either love or hate. You're on I just, side. I don't, I feel like it's, it's just not for me. There's, I think there's like a community yeah. bit about it where it's like, they only talk about a few things. It's the, the trucks, like their dog yep. uh, mm-hmm. drinking and then mm-hmm. their uh, woman. So yep exactly I would say there's probably like I don't think I I couldn't tell you the last time I like threw on a country playlist but maybe if there maybe there's randomly a day in the month that I'm like let's turn on a country song <laughs> like, today today's the country day and that's the, the only one day. it's feeling country so <laughs> gotta fit the vibe you got a like, country hat and cowboy boots to go with I do have the cowboy boots okay and I actually do have a cowboy hat in my car. (laughs) (laughs) 
I think that was for a costume, but I was like, you just never know. So I think I just kept it in my car. It's always necessary, especially if it's like really sunny out. You can just throw it on and be like, well, don't yeah. have to put sunscreen on my face. So we'll and cover like, everything. Exactly. And I also like it's funny. You can wear it ironically and unironically. Yes. <laughs> I'm wearing a cowgirl hat like type of thing where it's like okay that fits the outfit I don't know I think it could go either way and that's that's pretty fun (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome (sighs) all I can think of is like the gigantic cowboy hats that's Mm -hmm. my work sells those they're like navy and they're just they're like a I don't know the material of it it's not like a real hat it's like not a styrofoam but it's like like a foamy type thing yeah 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 I feel like I know what you're talking about and it's huge and people wear them and I'm like okay when are you gonna wear that again though (laughs) yeah right (laughs) it's gonna sit your house for years and years (laughs) Uh, oh yeah before we get back into today's episode let's learn about what's going on this week in the world of women's sports betting take it away Derek Hello, and thank you for listening to the Women's Sports Matter podcast. I'm Derek Helling, and I am here on behalf of BetHer.com. I am here, though, to talk to you about point totals and how to bet on them. Have you ever looked at the markets on a WNBA game and seen a number like 170.5 there and wondered what what that was all about? Well, that's that's the sports book's total for that game. Essentially, the sports book is guessing that the total, that the final score from that contest will add up to that number. It isn't how many points one or the other teams will score. It's the total final score of the game from both teams. For example, if the final score of the game was 72 to 70, then the total from that game would be 142 because 72 plus 70 is 142. So you can bet that the actual total from the game will either go over or under that number. You can't bet both sides at the same sports book, but if you've got access to more than one sports betting app where you live, you can bet one side at one book and one side at the other. That's totally legal. So to win your bet, all you have to do is guess correctly on either the over or the under. If you guess wrong, the sportsbook keeps your money. So you might be wondering what that half a point is about since you obviously can't score half a point in basketball. That's called a hook. And the Pritt's purpose is to ensure that either you or the sportsbook wins the bet. So if 170.5 was the number for a game and you bet the over, you would need the total to add up to at least 171 to win. If you bet the under, you would need the total to add up to 170 or less to win. Many lines will feature a hook, but it isn't always there. Sportsbooks offer totals in a variety of different ways, including on quarters and halves, on goals, on corners, on cards in some jurisdictions. Um, There are also totals for individual sports like golf and tennis, on things like birdies and games won during tournaments. So now that you understand how these markets work, let's take a look at some of the events that you might want to check out some totals on this week. Uh, the, the Professional Fighters League puts its women's lightweight class on the mat, so to speak, this week. Saturday, July 2nd, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern ESPN will have a live broadcast, and markets are available for the bouts right now. Now, The U.S. women's national team also has a friendly this week against Haiti. Uh, They play that in Mexico on Independence Day, July 4th. Check sports books that morning for markets. Wimbledon is back in action for 2022, with first-round matches happening right now. Futures and match markets are available as I speak. The NWSL gets back into action this Friday with at least one match on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the WNBA has games every day this week, at least one. Check your favorite sports betting apps the mornings of those events for markets. I want to remind you that previews of all these events and a lot more information on how to bet on women's sports legally and safely in Canada and the U.S. 
It's available for free at bethher.com. That's B-E-T hyphen H-E-R dot com. We just took a nice little break because we hate Zoom <laughs> charging us to, to, you know, have a full one hour conversation. Right. And we, well, Tatum manifested <laughs> something. <laughs> Tatum is a part of the best 11 of the month from the NWSL. So this is a Women's Sports Matter exclusive. (laughs) Tell me how you're feeling about this. I mean, I think it's really funny right now that we were talking about the goals. And then, I mean, now should we just thank Zoom? We could, it could be a little positive. Thank you, Zoom, for making us Yeah, thank you, Zoom. We could check the internet really fast and... Here we are. I mean, I think it's exciting. I mean, I, that was one of my goals that I had wanted. And I felt like, especially after last month, I was like, yeah, I feel like I definitely want like to strive for something. I mean, that's it's always good to be a part of something like that. I mean, it's it feels great because the people in the league are amazing. So, I mean, should I read the paragraph? <laughs> <laughs> We'll just we'll we'll do a little highlight of what what yeah you can do a summary. (laughs) Um, it says here that you registered a reliable eighty three percent passing accuracy. Whoa, out of Chicago's defensive half to help the Red Stars to an unbeaten month of play. I mean, go Red Stars! Go Red Stars! All right, we just need everything else that we, that we talked about to happen. And I know. Then... Shoot, should we just have a quick manifestation period? Like that, everyone, everyone listening, just think of your manifestations. <laughs> It'll come to you. <laughs> I am manifesting a drive to Nebraska that is less than eight hours. <laughs> I will also manifest that for you because that's it won't tough. happen. <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> telling you right now it will definitely not happen when do you have to do- make that drive so I work the day before um I have to leave so I'll be working a night game at the Cougars that's on August 17th and then the day after that I have to move in <laughs> so oh my gosh I did it to myself uh, essentially uh, but you live hey anywhere. You do what you got to do sometimes. It'll it'll either be really great or a really good story eventually. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be bad, but <laughs> My mom's like, "Why do we have to go to Nebraska? You should have picked Mizzou." And I'm like, "Well, I mean, there there was other options. Those <laughs> other options did, just didn't they, they didn't work out. So now oh. now we're stuck with uh, Nebraska." Um, I don't have any negative things to say about Nebraska yet, but yeah, I feel like I think I've driven through Nebraska. So, hey, no bad vibes toward Nebraska. <laughs> it's going to be a very boring drive that I know. Yeah, I, that's true. All corn. Yeah. I, mean, I feel I'm like all- either side of Illinois, it's tough. Like uh, Indiana's yeah. like you want to fall asleep and the other way is also just like, when are we going to get out of the corn? I, well, I mean, there's corn over here. I live by corn. It's, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's like you drive, you drive. Um, I was telling someone about this um, earlier this month. You drive like two minutes, not two minutes, like 10 minutes down and you get to Plainfield and it's like, there is corn. There's farms. Like, yeah, it's everywhere. And you just Straight cannot up. escape it. And then Nebraska corn huskers, get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> you, you did that to yourself. You really labeled yourself. It's like, <laughs> I, I love corn so much. I wanted to go to a school that... It's called the Corn Huskers. Yep. Awesome. It's really good. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure that... Did you drive to South Carolina when you moved in or did you fly I did. There? I drove. So that was about 12 hours. So I definitely get it. Anything so interesting cool. on the way there? Or... It, gets, it gets good about like halfway. Like Tennessee's not bad because I feel like you get some of the mountains. So it's at least a break from just driving through just like straight nothingness um but like (laughs) it is what it is (laughs) are there any interesting signs that you see on the way there Mm. because driving through indiana is always my favorite because there's a bunch of those signs if you know what i'm talking about (laughs) yeah i know what you mean (laughs) 
I'll yep. see it and I laugh to myself. I'm like, yep. oh my God, this is awesome. Like, yep, feel that. Yeah. <laughs> feel that. It's like the phone number, but it's like yep. not a full phone number. And it's like, do you do you expect me to know the area code if I wanted to call this number? Like right. You're in the middle of nowhere. It's like I don't yeah. know where I am. One one day the signs, <laughs> the signs gotta go. <laughs> I saw it. I was driving to Missouri recently. I was driving to St. Louis and I saw on the the right side of the road, there was the Hail Mary, like written out like card by card. So someone went out there and they put all those and I'm like, first of all, who has time to read that? (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Where are you putting your time? I feel like that needs to be reevaluated because come on. That's my favorite thing about road trips, though, is, like, seeing the signs. And I'll, like, I'll, my mom says I have an informational voice, which I probably have been doing some part of this show. And, like, I'll read them. I'll read them. Like, <laughs> and I'll just, and I'll, then I'll start, like, laughing. I'm like, this is, this is what I should be doing full time, yeah. is just reading Professional these Professional billboard reader. Yes. That's that's how I, mean, I that's how I spend there, my time on road trips. There are definitely some good ones that should I don't know about should be read, but I feel like it could be a good a good laugh if they were read. <laughs> it's a new TikTok idea for me. I hate TikTok, but yeah. <laughs> new new TikTok idea mm-hmm. for me. That's that's my that's it, what I'm manifesting. That could be a good that could keep you busy for eight hours. I mean, if you just keep like taking little clips of like top 10 signs from on my way to Nebraska (laughs) like (laughs) and I'm sure there's going to be a ton of them I'm Um, sure it can be a short series (laughs) it's like a 10-parter like a million (laughs) signs that you see um on your way to a red state my favorite my favorite topic of conversation (laughs) yeah there's so so many different ways to look at those too it's so great so entertaining it is that's my it's, it's my favorite thing about road trips <laughs> gonna move the topic along because <laughs> yeah. I'm very good at doing that um this month I am doing donations to queer organizations for pride month mm-hmm. because essentially I am not trying to just be like hey I got a rainbow logo happy right. pride um I am donating money to the guest choice charity can you tell me about the charity that you picked today yes so I wanted to do a local one I'm just gonna pull up the website just so I don't misread any information it's the brave space alliance I don't know if you've heard of this one I thought it was really special um it's in the south side of Chicago so that's like very local I'm I think the city needs a lot more stuff like this um, just to branch out and bring more people together. So this one I think is really special because it's the first black led trans led LGBTQ plus center located in Chicago. So um, I thought that was really exciting. And I think it also is plays into a lot of different things that I think we both agree on and believe in. So I really like that it tied um, a lot of things together. I went to the White Sox Pride game the other day and someone from that space threw out the first pitch. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, I, know, I know what awesome. that is. Yeah. I think um, our uh, Julianne Sitch threw out the pitch too. I saw that. Yeah, that she really did. Cool. Love that. That is actually cool. I love seeing like who, who throws out um, first pitches of games. It's always like, mm-hmm. do I know who this person is? Yeah. It's like a random person. <laughs> I know people pay for that sometimes. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. Well, from for where I work, it's a part of like birthday party packages. So you oh, go and you throw out the first pitch and then you get like your name on the board and you go on the field to sing okay. happy birthday. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, so it's a whole thing. The perks of working for an independent baseball team, you know, I, so much. Yeah, I could see how that would be exciting. Yeah, that's cool. So I have a would you rather. For okay, you. hit me. Would you rather. Throw out the first pitch for the Chicago Cubs or the Chicago White Sox, and why? Um, that is a that's the easy answer for me. The White Sox. There we go. Um, I grew up um in the south or southeastern suburbs of the city, and always a White Sox fan. I I still vividly remember 2005. I was in my grandparents' basement watching the World Series, and I was like, also AJ Przinsky was my favorite player. The shout out. I don't know. I, I don't know if he's listening. <laughs> 
<laughs> just in case just in case yeah, yeah. yeah so that one was easy um white Sox fan but i mean i i'm also not like a, a hater like i'll go to cubs games i think mm. both both i think both are fun um i'm not super serious in baseball but okay I rivalry but Sox fan my family and i will always bring this up for everyone they're like gianna you have to stop asking local people if they like the socks or the cubs. And I'm like, no, this is the type of journalism that I want to get into asking people what their alliances are. And I just right here, I'm not wearing it currently, but here's my, my white Sox hat. Oh, I'm I a love white that. Sox fan. Got a, got a rep. Yeah. The white Sox. Um, I do not remember the world series. <laughs> I was three years old. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So that's a shame yeah that's fair that's fair but it, it was a good day yeah no I think that's a good question I think that's a really fair question for Chicago Illinois people in general because I think it's very divided and it gets heated oh my god it's it so <laughs> heated I, I'm not bringing that heat but there are some people that are feeling the heat yes we my sister is a Cubs fan for some reason my mom and I are White Sox fans okay there's a whole history of White Sox stuff in my family. So we're just, we have like, you know, those bricks okay. that are at the stadium, like on, like they have like the names on them and all that. Our yeah. family has one of those. Um, so there's that. Uh, my uncle. Oh my God. Boy in That's the 80s. Fun. So there's that history too. So team White Sox all the way. And I yeah. will, I will be hostile towards people that are Cubs fans on this show because it has happened. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, really glad. I'm glad we're on the same page then. I, don't I knew you were a White Sox fan. <laughs> I already knew the answer. I just wanted to ask. You got to inform the people. Yeah. We'll give the people notch, what they really want to know. Top notch, not serious mm-hmm. podcasting <laughs> right here. But AJ Przinsky might be listening. We don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> Definitely not listening. I will tell you that much. <laughs> We're manifesting today. So you never know what will happen. Yes. Wait, the, the whole theme of this episode is just manifesting. <laughs> manifesting. <laughs> Whew, okay. Have oh, you been into cool. any White Sox games recently? I haven't this year. Um, no, not yet. I think I maybe soon. I think I'm waiting for when we have m- more of a break. I wouldn't recommend going. They've been just because. Really oh, okay. <laughs> well, then that saves me the time. So I appreciate it the does. honesty. <laughs> it, it. I went to two games last week. One of them, which they won, then the other one, which they lost to the Orioles. I don't the know Orioles. much, but I think that's bad. That is very bad. <laughs> It is embarrassing <laughs> to say the least. And yeah, that's, that's all the tough. baseball talk we're doing today because I don't want people to get bored and be like, oh, yeah. well, this is a women's <laughs> sports show anymore. I am a true, I like baseball was my first sport. It's my, it's mm-hmm. my first love in terms of sports. White Sox, that is, that is all the yeah. go, go Sox. And that's, that's how we're ending that, that topic. White Sox, that's all. Cause I'm really good at segues. <laughs> all right i could i could get distracted for days so keep me on track <laughs> all right it is time for a new segment on this show fan questions i'm ready i'm fan excited questions. not a lot which is very disappointing because i expect better from for the people on twitter so yeah but we'll we'll work with what we got we'll work with <laughs> what we got um there's some serious questions and not so serious questions okay so which I one do you want to start with first I think let's start with the serious one because I feel then we could segue into more fun things as okay. the not serious questions come in. We have a question from Abby Jones 25 on Twitter. Okay. What was it like to step up into a significant role your rookie season? And then after that, it says, has this experience helped with adjusting to all the changes in parentheses, injuries, comma moves in Chicago this year? Yes. Okay. So the beginning, <clears throat> what was it like? Um it was scary. Like it was very scary. I think I didn't just coming off of an injury. I didn't know where I would stand playing against like the best people in the country and the world in some places. Like it it was a really big change. Um, but I think it also made me grow a lot and kind of find out my strengths and my weaknesses and 
be more honest and realistic with myself for something. So I think that was one of the biggest things that I took from that. It's like the confidence, um, just going in, like not really knowing anything and then getting the opportunity um, was really great. So I think learning the confidence and just the play of the game was really helpful. Um, the second part, I think, as I said earlier, the rookies, like we're, we're like the same age. So I think it also does help because having the whatever eight games last season and even playing in a final, like really does have that much, that much experience on you. I mean, I definitely learned so much more than I thought I would have going into it. Um, and so I think when the rookies are getting this play time and they're starting and subbing in, it's helpful to have people in your corner on your side that were there six months ago. Like, so I think it definitely um, made me feel more confident on the field, but also confident to go to other younger people and give advice and help and guide them. So I think um, it's a good, it, it was a good experience to help me relate to other people and, I think kind of grow into what I want my role to be on this team. I think that was a really long answer, but no, I, think, it's good. I think I think that's good how, answer. That's that was the question. <laughs> yes, there we go. There's the okay. answer to that one. Okay, cool. Thank All right. you, Abby Jones. A lot of people have asked this one, so there's not really one to like tie it down to who asked. It says, okay. "What is it like to play for a team in your home state?" It is one word amazing um I'm really I'm a homebody I love being with my family um like my three younger sisters like we're all very close and so being able for my mom and my grandparents and my sisters to come to the games um is like more than I could have even asked for like it means so much to me so I think that's my favorite part because I know my grandparents love coming to the games and it's like this running joke that they're very loud and talk to a bunch of people and they're like Tatum's our granddaughter all this stuff and it's like a joke with the staff at the stadium because every single person on the staff at the stadium that I've run into knows who my grandparents are and I'm like they need to sit down like (laughs) this is crazy stop talking to people but I think that's that's my favorite part just being like growing up here just kind of and also seeing I guess I've never really thought about this, but seeing where the Red Stars started at Benedictine and being a fan there and being like, I don't know where this could go to now being on the team. We're in a stadium and I think we're really pushing limits now and like trying to really break those ceilings to grow the game. So I think that's also really cool too. All right, this next question is from Red Stars Report. And (laughs) he asked... um, could you talk about Alyssa Nair's vocal leadership and how much more comfortable it is for a defender to have the best goalkeeper in the world behind you and keeping mm-hmm. you organized? I mean, I don't know how much more comfortable you could get with her behind you. Like her experience, the stuff she says is so helpful. And it's the little things too. It's like you make a good tackle, you stop a ball and she's right behind you saying like, that was great T, like great job, great header. And it's like, to me, it's the little things that really like you say to your teammates that are just like the little reassurance or like that type of thing. And that has like meant the world to me this year, because just like a new formation kind of playing differently with only three of us back there. I mean, it is um, stressful (laughs) sometimes and you're not sure like if you're making the right decision on plays and stuff. And so it's really it's been so helpful to have her back there and especially just knowing like. I'm going to give my all to make this tackle or slow down this play because I know Alyssa's behind me and she's actually like the best goalkeeper in the world. So I know she has my back and she'll put it all out there to, in case I make a mistake or something. So that is also really helpful knowing like I'm not stranded out here. Like she's got my back behind me (laughs) type thing. Absolutely. All right. So Mm -hmm. my, my great friend, Thomas Costello has asked three questions. Okay. Um, One of them is, I guess, a serious question. Then two other, the two other ones are the fun ones. So we're going to go with the serious ones and then we're going to work our way way back up to the top with the fun questions. (laughs) Okay. So this question is, who is the toughest opposing player in the NWSL? Mm. I think personally, the ones I've, 
gone one-on-one with um I think Trinity and Sophia are up there for it's it's very hard to defend them they're so quick they're always doing something that is unpredictable and so I think that's the hardest part but also playing against Mal every single day in training is also very hard so I think between those three it's been really good because they each bring something different so playing different teams like that um, you definitely learn how to defend different players (laughs) all right we're gonna go to the fun questions now (laughs) and um the person that asked this one didn't want me to ask it but I was like no this is a great question we're gonna do it so my friend that runs the account did Chicago win Mm -hmm. he asked do you eat hot dogs with or without ketchup um growing up I know this is gonna sound bad growing up I did eat hot dogs with just ketchup um but now I'm more of a I think I grew into my palate. So it's a, it's a everything hot dog type of thing. Now, I think I had to mature a little bit <laughs> and do the mustard, the onions, the relish, that type of thing. So that's where we're at now. Yeah. I still only put ketchup <laughs> on hot dogs. I mean, I don't, I don't get the problem with it, but some people are just There's like, a huge problem you can't, for no reason, literally no reason. And I still don't know how this came up. Like where, where did this begin? <laughs> I... I get yelled at at family functions for doing it. I th- do you know the Chicago Dogs, the minor league or yeah. independent team? Their whole thing is like no yeah. ketchup, and they're they're villain for people that don't know. They have two mascots. Well, technically they have three, but the third one's fake. the The two <laughs> mascots are the mustard bottle and the ketchup bottle, and the, the <laughs> mustard bottle is you know a good guy, and okay. and the ketchup bottle is like. He's got like a trench coat on and he was like a Suspicious. evil looking face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's funny. So they are yeah. pet ketchup haters. And we were at the game the other day and my mom was like, they gave me ketchup for my hot dog. And I was like, that breaks <laughs> everything. That ruins everything. <laughs> like, you you got to stay that? with your theme. Stick to the theme. <laughs> their, their whole thing is like hashtag no ketchup. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you guys. So you like so you're liars now (laughs) yeah they're they are liars and I'm glad we can call them out here the the hard-hitting journalism that women's sports matter really needs today yeah we're actually hitting all the good topics today so it's really great (laughs) all right this next question is from Thomas Costello the final two questions are from him okay who is the funniest teammate Mm. I'm gonna say Bianca I think she is hilarious. She's very, um, speaks her mind, love to hear what that girl's thinking. She's hilarious and just always in a good mood. So it's, it's a good time to be around her. Or I would say Kayla Sharples, but I've spent a lot of time with Kayla. So I think her and her humor is funny to me. (laughs) Yeah. And the final fan question is favorite non-soccer related hobby? Mm. Um, I don't, I would say, I don't know if this is a hobby. I love painting nails. I love doing my nails. I have like these design things. Um, I don't know if that's like a weird hobby, but I do enjoy like really, and I do take a lot of time throughout my week painting my nails <laughs> so I don't know that um I like painting too I like artistic things um yeah I'd say probably those two or reading but it's got to be lately I've been into um like my the rom-com books <laughs> I'm like sometimes I pick them up and I'm like does this seem like immature because it's a rom-com and I'm like no like it's an easy read it's fine like we don't let anyone tell you differently do you listen so, to audiobooks say, at all um I actually listened uh, it depends if I'm like driving a lot I think the last one I listened to was the Matthew McConaughey one I don't know if you've listened to that green light no yeah I don't um, listen to audiobooks yeah that's maybe maybe in eight hours well I gotta fill up my my time somehow (laughs) yeah but honestly not a huge audio it it really just depends if I'm driving a lot and I've already listened to my 
my 20 songs that I listen to every day. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That was the fan questions. I don't know if I'll do that again. We'll see. We love um, fan questions. Fan questions are awesome. All right. So back to a few questions from me. Then we're going to do a lightning round. And then this podcast is over. All right. So in the beginning of the season, I believe Challenge Cup, you have these wonderful highlights. I want to know the story behind that because they looked really freaking cool. Yeah, so I had been wanting, I my favorite color is pink, like just pink everything. And then I was like, I'd been wanting to do just like the front strips hot pink for a while. And I was like, honestly, like, why not? Like you play soccer, like you can do whatever you want to your hair, like who cares? And so finally I just went and did it. And I was like, I'll just do it for like a short little challenge cup thing. And I'm so glad that I did. I loved it for the time. It was so different and cool. And um, yeah, I loved the hot pink hair. <laughs> it was, it was really cool. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> My next question for you is game day fits. How do you come up with your outfits? Is there like, do you like plan them out in a week in advance? Like, oh my gosh, I had the perfect fit ready for this game. Here it is. I'm not going to touch it until game day. What are your, how do you come up with game day fits? I I wish I was that organized about it. I feel like that would be nice, but usually it's like day of we're trying on 20 outfits. What looks the best. So it's really just like spur of the moment type thing. I think there was one game day where like, I happened to go shopping the day before and I was like, oh, I could buy a game day outfit. Um, but usually we're just trying to throw together what we have. And it's been working so far, so I don't think I'll change it. All the teams in the league have awesome fits. I can't pick a favorite. It's like they're all phenomenal. I wish I could dress as well as everyone else can because it's like I don't <laughs> I don't know how they do it. So it I always really got to ask. It is really fun. I it, it's really interesting to look at the other outfits. I'm like, oh, that one's really good. Oh, that's a good idea. So uh, honestly, I'd say the fits are the fits are elite right now. All right. It is time for the lightning round, which apparently I should stop calling the lightning round because people take too long to answer the questions again, according to my family. I like throwing <laughs> my family under the bus because they always critique me and I'm like, it's not that serious. Yeah, it's just it's a fun time. Fun. It's a show. It's for fun. It's for fun. It's like I, I'll, I'll try to be quick, and then they. No, they you don't. You can fun. take all the freaking time you need. Oh, uh, so I'm ready. All right, I'm gonna assume that you're Italian. Is my assumption correct? Yes. Okay. What is your favorite Italian dish? I think my go-to, the one I eat most, is probably penne pasta with vodka sauce. All that's, right. that's probably my go-to at most Italian places. <laughs> have you been to Italy before? I have. I was, I think, two years old. So I do I remember? No. But was I there? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure you remember, like, everything yeah, part like, of this trip. It was a trip. great time. <laughs> You remember all the places you visited and uh, the whole thing. It's, it's a great memory up, up there. Yeah. Um, can you take me through a walkthrough of what game days are like, like getting ready, getting to let, let's say this is a home game. So getting ready, okay. all that. Yeah. So we'll say, we'll, we'll say we have a seven o'clock game. We'll, we'll set the time. Um, usually would wake up whenever really don't need an alarm I usually wake up by like eight though so it's not super late um we have been going to foxtrot we I get a breakfast sandwich and a smoothie every game day love their breakfast sandwich and smoothie um come home usually just watch tv all day (laughs) and then probably around four would leave for the game um you know how this this traffic is crazy so probably give myself an hour and a half to get there (laughs) to be safe um and then this year it's actually been fun I've been in charge of aux for the pregame music so that's that's my go-to job when I get to the stadium hook up the speaker and get the the good vibes rolling (laughs) all right 
Who yeah. has the worst music taste on your team? Mm. I can't say that I know everyone's music taste because honestly, when we're in there, I think I just put on my music. <laughs> so, I don't know if I've ever heard anyone else's music. So I don't want to shade anyone without knowing, but I'm going to leave that one up in the air. And if, if I've ever figure out an answer, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> Again, hard hitting <laughs> journalism on women's sports matter. Everyone yeah, needs to know. I'll get done. Yeah. Get done. <laughs> All right. Finally, what is your favorite holiday? This year, my birthday was on Easter. So that would have probably been my favorite holiday. <laughs> but probably probably Christmas I think that's the main holiday where all my sisters and all my family's home like all the other holidays it's like kind of hit or miss um but Christmas when everyone's together I'd say except that last Christmas I had COVID so I couldn't even go see my family on Christmas but other than that probably Christmas (laughs) all right Christmas is always a fun time my family actually for the first time in a few years got together last christmas so it was fun to to see all them because that is nice yeah wonderful time with my family yeah all right (laughs) christmas amazing everything about it the lights my favorite thing is the lights that's all i care about beautiful i'll go on like the trolleys and you go through like well at least around here the neighborhoods People go yeah. all out in like Aurora and Naperville. I'm like, Jesus. yes. And the houses that like, at least from in the suburbs um, in my town, it's like the houses that connect to like a radio station. And so when you drive yes. by in your car, the music yes. is going. And I was like, this is intense and I'm scared, but I respect it. <laughs> all right. Now is time. This is a new thing I'm doing at the end of my shows. It's the shout out time. You can shout out anyone you want. Go ahead. Ooh, I'm going to shout out two people. I'm going to shout out my bestie girl, Ella Stevens. Shout out. And I'm also going to shout out my roomie, Kayla Sharples, because she's getting her ACL surgery this week. And so everyone send her good vibes and a happy, healthy recovery because she's going to kill it. So sorry. I, I don't know if I had to pick one, but I gave you two. <laughs> Shout out, shout outs. Anything works here. <laughs> shout out, shout out. You get a shout out. You get a shout out. Exactly. That, that's, that's how it goes here. I love it. That's fine. All right. Now it is time for you to tell people where they can follow you on social or where you can go watch the Red Stars play, I guess, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I guess it's kind of, I'm not super positive where our game is being streamed this weekend. Um, you know, it's always, it's always changing. You never know. But we are going to be in New Jersey, New York this weekend um, playing Gotham. So that'll be exciting. Everyone tune in. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's just Tatum Malazzo. Keep it simple. Very so simple. That's it. All right. Now it's time for my end of episode spiel i'm gonna try and make it quick but it's really the worst part of each episode i'm ready to hear it (laughs) Uh, i used to i used to do this thing where i would like like take a second and like regroup and then in the just go like right into it now i'm i'm trying to be a little just a tad more professional so i'm just gonna go into it right now if you want to follow me on social media guess what you can i am on four different places whoa four i know it's a great amount twitter is w sports matter and everything else on tiktok instagram and facebook is woman sports matter there's a youtube channel with the same name so if you want to watch this interview and all the other interviews that i've done before there's your reason to go subscribe to woman sports matter also There is going to be a really cool announcement coming out next week. So I think you should go follow on social to see all that happen. There might be a website. There might be a new logo. There might be new shows, a part of Women's Sports. I don't know. I haven't decided if I want to share that with the world yet or not. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll We'll see. see. Um, One big thing I'm doing this season on Women's Sports Matter is saying to support your local women's sports team. 
for me, there's a bunch of them out here. We got all the Chicago teams, essentially. Chicago Red Stars, Chicago Sky, there's Chicago City, Chicago Dutch Lions, a bunch of teams. Go support them. Let me know if you're going out to support your local women's sports team. There's a hashtag. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it's support your, support your local women's sports team. So it's the first letter of all of those. Use the hashtag. Take a picture of you at the game. You could be featured on the social pages for Women's Sports Matter. Isn't that neat? That is very neat. I was very I'm neat. featured. So <laughs> y'all get to it. Go find your local women's team. There you go. Endorse from the, yeah. the Chicago Red Stars defender yeah. herself. All right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let's see. What else is there? June 28th is the election for Illinois. Go vote. You can't register to vote anymore. I already told you to go vote or register yeah. to vote. Go vote, please. Go, go vote. Go vote. Go. It's important. Please it's the vote. most important. Please. Super duper important. Please go vote. Like your lives depend on it mm-hmm. because they do. <laughs> All right. That's it for me today. Thank you again, Tatum, for coming on this yes, episode of Women's Sports so Matter. Much. Thanks for having me. Yes, we're going to end this show today. Thank you all for listening to another episode of Women's Sports Matter podcast. Again, my name is Gianna Castro, and I'm your host. Stay tuned for some exciting stuff next week. I'm going to go watch TV, maybe. We'll see. I will see you all next week. Thanks for listening. That's all, (laughs) folks. Bye.